0 inches. By the way, the charts do not work on the bare uninstall grip, only on the grip clubs. For lady standard size, again measuring 2 inches below the grip cap, the decimal reading on our caliper should measure approximately 0.85 inches. This leads us to the next two grip sizes, midsize and jumbo. Okay, this is where it gets a little tricky, so let me explain. When a company has a midsize grip, what they're talking about is a grip that's larger than their standard size model. If a company offers a jumbo grip, it's much larger than the men's standard model and larger than the midsize of that same model. That's all we could take away from the descriptive nomenclature because the entire grip industry is not standardized grip sizing down to an exact science. For example, Wynn has a popular model called the XLRF midsize, and it's been around for about a decade. If you dig deep enough in their product literature from Wynn, you'll find out this grip is a plus one thirty-second inch over their men's standard size. Yet if you look at the midsize models and their other models, like the PCI, the DSI, the XI-7, they list them at um, plus one sixteenth of an inch over men's standard. Now we need to conduct a little refresher course in math here. What's the difference between a uh, 1 32nd and a 1 16th? Well, if you've got your cal calculator out, divide by or divide 1 by 32. The, calcu the calculator should read 0 0.03125. Remember, this is over men's standard. And what did I say before about men's standard size? It was 0 0.900. So a plus 132nd men's grip should measure 0.931 inches. Next, let's divide 1 by 16. The calculator now should read 0 0.0625 inches. If we add this to the 0 0.900, which is men's standard, now we have 0.963 if we're rounding up. Now, most of you will have no trouble understanding that 0.932 is not the same as 0.963. Plus, you know that 0.963 is, is larger. That is how to understand and how to convert the fractions into the decimal equivalents. Luckily, we have charts for our own reference. All you need to be able to do is measure the group accurately with your calipers. Let's uh, take a moment to look at this chart that references the decimal equivalent of the various grip sizes. You're probably thinking, boy, there are a lot of them. But in reality, you're only going to use probably half of them in, um, in normal grip sizing. We have our men's standard size listed in red and our ladies in blue. But if you look at the two highlighted entries, you'll see that some, there, there's a little bit of overlap. For example, a lady's 1 64th inch is essentially the same grip size as a men's minus 1 32nd inch. This will come in handy later when we start to look at the big chart when we go to figure out how to create each of these different sizes. Now, how do you create these different sizes? Well, we first need to know what the core size of the grip is and the diameter of the shaft that we're installing the grip onto. So let's look closely at the big chart for calculating the size, plus notes on how to make the grip larger by putting on masking tape or smaller by stretching down the grip. The most common size that you'll encounter are a shaft with a butt diameter of 600 and a grip core size uh, that's the same. Not coincidentally, this happens to be men's standard size. This is assuming, of course, that the grip that you're using is not already a midsize or an oversize or a jumbo grip to start. Now, standard sizing is achieved without adding any additional tape to the shaft. I should probably state this first, but one wrap of double-sided tape is already factored into the, the sizing on this chart, so that's a, a given. So if you look at my cursor again, 
we have the min, six, uh, min 60 uh, grip on a 600 foot diameter. Uh, no additional wraps of tape will give us our standard size. Many of the men's most popular grips are available in a, a 580 and a 600 core option. It's now becoming more common to see a 580 grip on a 600 butt diameter. And if you look at our chart, you'll see that this effectively makes the grip size a 64th inch over men's standard. And it's important when we're gripping to make sure uh, to read the, the core size from the mouth of the grip, the uh, mouth of the grip that you just removed. Again, here's our M58, 600 butt diameter. No wraps of tape will yield a plus 164th inch. Okay. Let's say a person likes the, the grip size on his current club. It happens to be a 580 grip onto a 600 butt diameter. But all you have is a 600 core size grips. Don't worry. This is not a problem since you attended today's webinar. You want to look at the chart for a second, and it'll tell you that you'll need two layers of, of masking tape or build-up tape to achieve, uh, achieve our 164th inch um, size. Again, there's our M60, 600 core size. Underneath the, uh, the column for plus 164th, you'll see where it has uh, the two right there. Now, here's a quick question. Have you ever noticed that different uh, core size grips of the same model weigh differently? Well, let's use the example of a men's standard version of the uh, Golf Pride Tour Velva grip. The 580 core size weighs 52 grams, while the Tour Velvet and 60 core size weighs only 50 grams. Remember, if a 580 core grip is installed onto a 580 shaft, will be the same size as a 60 core grip installed onto a 600 shaft. Even though these grips are not the same weight, they will produce the, in, the same installed sizes. And this is due to the fact that there's more material um, on the, the smaller core 580 grip to achieve men's standard size. The core of, or the inside diameter of a 580 grip will actually be smaller, but the actual grip material will be slightly thicker. Now, a larger core size grip will require less actual grip material to achieve its finished size due to the amount of space that the core occupies. Therefore, the larger the core, the lighter the grip when discussing grips of the same pattern. Not only is the weight um, different, there is a reason why using a 580 grip onto a 600 butt diameter will result into a larger size is because it has to stretch over the shaft's larger butt diameter. Remember, this is the equivalent if we take our 600 core grip on a 600 shaft with two additional wraps of, of masking or build-up tape. And most people in this circumstance will understand that the grip is going to stretch over the larger butt end and expand it. Now let's talk about build-up tape for a moment. Wait for the screen to change. The, okay. During this discussion of tapes used in regripping, we're going to use the industry averages for tape dimensions. If you use a tape purchased at a local store, you want to be aware that it may or may not be the same thickness as the tape that we're using in our example. 